down because you think you're cute. I get so sick and tired of going up and down my Facebook line. And I'm going to tell you right now, when I see pictures like that, I'm going to delete you as my friend. I'm going to block you. For some reason, the women of God in this hour don't want to put on clothes. And I don't know why. Now, you Christians, you have so-called Christian celebrities that look like this. You have some first lady in churches, pastor wives. You look like this. You let your children look like this. You let many of the mothers in the church look like this. You go to so-called Christian concerts and the women look like this. Juanita Bynum has recently taken a stand against women preaching the gospel while dressed provocatively, asserting that such attire undermines the message of holiness and integrity in ministry. This viewpoint is supported by Gino Jennings, who has long criticized immodest dressing among female preachers as contradictory to the biblical standards of modesty and holiness. Bynum's argument is that the image and presentation of a preacher should align with the sacredness of their message. She believes that provocative dressing distracts from the spiritual substance of the gospel and may lead to misunderstandings or misrepresentations of Christian values. Bynum's stance is part of a broader conversation on the importance of appearance and conduct in ministry, emphasizing that preachers should embody the principles they teach. They said, makeup is not in the Bible. This is what you church folk look like. One of you brothers get that side for me, will you please? Quickly, please. Come on, brother. Now, you Christians, you have so-called Christian celebrities that look like this. You have some first lady in churches, pastor wives, you look like this. You let your children look like this. You let many of the mothers in the church look like this. You go to so-called Christian concerts and the women look like this. The Bible says, in like manner also, in like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. What is so modest about this? What is so modest about this? There were some women wrote me when they heard me preach against it and said, "My pastor don't say nothing." I most certainly know he don't. Your pastor wants to see this. Yeah. Your pastor wants to see this. Yeah. Because your pastor wants to go here. Yeah. Am I right, I said? Talk to me. Am I right, I said? Amen. Listen. And when thou art spoiled, when you are spoiled, what wilt thou do? What will you do? Though thou closest thyself with crimson, the Bible said you close yourself with crimson. Though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold. What else? Though thou rinnest thy face with painting, your face have what on it? Thou rinnest thy face with painting. You see it? The Bible says, Though thou rinnest thy face with painting, How do God feel about the way this look? In vain. In what? In vain. What do they do in vain? Thou shalt make thyself fair. You think you look beautiful, but in God's eyes, your fair look is vanity. Vanity. <laughs> this is what church have become to. You look on BET, the choirs look like this. Baptist folk, like this. Non-denominational, like this. So-called apostolic, like this. Catholics, like this. Give me Leviticus 10.10. 10. In Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 10. Listen now what the Bible says. That thou shalt put a difference. What did it say? Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 10. Turn Williams up. Make him louder. 
Yeah, Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 10. Leviticus 10, 10. I want all my viewers to get this, get this, get this. Call the ones that hate it and say, look at what that crazy Pastor Jennings got on television now. That's right. You know why some of you upset? Because this look like your mama. This look like your daughter. This look like your wife. Yeah. This look like your slacking wife. Yeah. This look like the pastor wife. Yeah. And that's why you upset with me. Yeah. Because we call a spade a spade. Gino Jennings has consistently preached similar views, advocating for strict adherence to modesty as outlined in the Bible. Jennings argues that preachers, especially women, must set an example through their attire reflecting their commitment to living a life that honors God. He has often cited scriptural references to support his position, highlighting the need for a clear distinction between the sacred and the secular. Both Bynum and Jennings call for a reevaluation of how contemporary Christian leaders present themselves, urging a return to traditional values that prioritize spiritual integrity over modern fashion trends. Their perspectives resonate with those who believe that maintaining a godly appearance is essential to effectively ministering and upholding the sanctity of the gospel. My spirit is kind of heavy for several reasons and probably by the time I get off the program today, some of you may unfriend me. What I'm going to minister today is, is purely out of love. My love for you and my love for who God has called you to be. If we're not really, really careful, we will begin to be put in a position where it's almost like we're backpedaling and trying to forward pedal at the same time. Now you can't tell the believers from the unbelievers. Now there is no difference. And I guess I'm just not understanding how pastors can allow people to parade in their churches looking like that. I've never seen in this hour so many women that are Christians and you're, you are in service, in the service of the Lord, ministering the gospel with your cleavage all the way down here where I can see the crack of your breast. Something has gone wrong. Oh, I know the Bible said we come into the body of Christ as babes. I know we... we we use the terminology, people, that we ought to come as we are. But why is it that we're coming as we are, but we're staying as we are? That skirts are so tight and so short until half of your thighs are out and you're ministering. And I can't even, I can't even get to the concept of somebody preaching and leading praise and worship with no stockings on, with thongy, stringy shoes on, and your legs all greased up. What kind of message are you trying to send us? Because to me, that looked like somebody that's got a whole spirit that ain't purged out in God. And any minute you can just go over in a corner to a deacon and just raise your dress up and hit it right there in the corner. Because you don't even have drawers on. You got on thongs and some greasy legs and a bip bop skirt. And you are praising worship leader. Something is, is absolutely, positively wrong with that. And then we wonder why there was so much sexual promiscuity in the body of Christ. And I'm not saying that you got to be like an old fogey woman because I love to look beautiful. But there's a time and a place for it all. And Sunday morning service is not a time for you to show us your nipples in your titties. Where is your bra? How are you coming to church on a Sunday morning to worship God and you have no bra on, no underwear on? Okay, so we don't wear girdles no more. But have you ever heard of Spanx that keeps you from jiggling like that? And then you won't sit down. You're the person that just won't sit down because you think you're cute. I get so sick and tired of going up and down my Facebook line. And I'm going to tell you right now, when I see pictures like that, I'm going to delete you as my friend. I'm going to block you. For some reason, the women of God in this hour don't want to put on clothes. And I don't know why. Because we finally got enough money to buy titties. And now everything you wear got to be tight, got to be sexy. 
sex appeal is on an all-time high. Not worship, not brokenness, not Lord, here I am. Not God purge me and cleanse me. Where is the scripture that says that women ought to dress in modest apparel with shame face? We're not shame anymore. And there's something wrong when the Holy Ghost in you don't ever say to you, that's too tight. How is it that you don't think it's too tight when it's so tight in the front that you can actually see the print of your vagina? Really, y'all, come on. And it hurts. It hurts because we're the Christians. It hurts. And we're the Christians and we looking like hoes. And we done went body con crazy. Everything is a body con dress. Are y'all serious? You the women of God and you and you taking pictures with your shoulder all out like this and you and, and you the woman of God? You the woman of God and your your chest is all the way down here on Facebook. I don't care if you ain't in church. Who takes a picture like that? Because you're confusing us. Because one minute you want to give us the word of the Lord. And one minute you want to tell us what God is saying. And one minute you want to prophesy. And the next minute we see you taking an all out sex picture. And a selfie of yourself. I don't care if my spiritual daughters did just disown me. You could unfriend me. You could say whatever you want to say. Because you know what? I didn't sign up for a hoe as a daughter in the first place, so you won't offend me. Get on somewhere with that. Because if we don't raise a standard in the body of Christ, then where in the world are we going? And I don't care what nobody said. Well, you know what? It, 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 it ain't, it ain't what's, what you wear is what's in your heart. What, what's in your heart is testifying. The way you look testifies of what's in your heart. And you think that's how you're going to find a man? Do you think a real man of God won't you? Because if that's what it took to turn him on to you, there's another girl out there that look way better than you.